Hi, this is Ned Siegfried from Siegfried & Jensen. As proud sponsors of BeliefCast, we hope you are inspired by Todd's weekly podcasts, which contain so many courageous stories of recovery and personal growth. Remember, it's not what happened in the past that matters, it's what happens in the future. We invite you all to work hard and be optimistic about your future. Enjoy today's podcast. Welcome back, everybody. This is Todd Sylvester with the Todd Inspires Belief Cast. Thank you once again for tuning in. I love you guys. You guys are such loyal followers, and you are making this uh, a reality for me. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And I, you know, I'm just so grateful for all of the success. But it's because of you guys, and it's because of the amazing guests that I have on week after week. Um, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsors: Siegfried and Jensen, Wasatch Recovery. Mountain West Spine and Orthopedics, my good friend Drew Peterson, and we just landed Thread Wallets, uh, which is an incredible company by uh, Colby and McKenzie, and they're amazing people. So thank you for supporting this and making this all possible. And once again, thanks for tuning in. Today is a special treat. Uh, we are joined by uh, Ava Mabry. Ava, thank you for joining us. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Uh, you guys are in for a treat. Like I said, Ava is 15 years old. Um, she uh, is probably more mature than most 30 year olds. Uh, <laughs> oh my um, gosh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I don't, well, you know, uh, I, I just really love the way you carry yourself. You know, I, I, I have a coworker that suggested uh, that I get you on our podcast here today. And after I did some research on you and seen what you're doing, I was like, absolutely, I'd be honored to have you on. Um, oh, Ava, a uh, little background on Ava. She, like I said, she's 15 year old. She's 15. She's a singer songwriter bent on loving people that listen to her music. Her influences range from gospel uh, to R&B to country. Her music fearlessly celebrates family, heartbreak, change, and God. And we're going to talk a lot about her faith in God and why that's so important to her. She lives in Franklin, Tennessee with her parents and her brothers. She records in Nashville and attends, is it Berkeley? Am I saying that right? Yes, Berkeley yeah. College of Music. Berkeley College of Music. And uh, we're going to talk about how to connect with her when we're done here. But she's got an amazing voice. I was listening this morning to one of her songs. Called, it's called Beautiful. And boy, I brought tears to my eyes. Her voice is just angelic. And, so but more much. importantly, again, I just love the way you carry yourself and the confidence that you have. So Ava, welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm so honored to be on your show. This is, this is amazing. And I'm just so excited to talk to you today. Yeah, you bet. So why don't we start? I mean, I know you're only 15, but tell us a little about your childhood and just a little bit about your family. So I have three brothers. I'm the only girl, um, okay. but my brother actually just got married last week. So I finally got my sister. Yes. And that is so exciting. I have two amazing parents. They, they're so, so awesome. Both of them are like my best friends. And, um, and that's really cool. What, what makes them awesome? Like what, what about your parents that are just so awesome? I think my parents celebrate the big and little things and, um, and mm -hmm. they make me feel comfortable with like failure and, and they really celebrate the big things that go on. And when I succeed and they help me to overcome and like really love the difficulty of like trying new things and, um, and sometimes not always getting what I want. And, and yeah. just like, when I don't do something right, they, um, they're right there and they're helping me get through things. And so I think that that's what they do best. And I just, I love them for that. Well, that's beautifully said. So, you know, obviously being a singer and songwriter takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of faith. Uh, it takes, like you said, falling on your face sometimes and maybe making mistakes and that kind of thing. Have you always been this kind of confident girl, like even when you were younger than you are now? Um, no, no. And I say I'm probably not like full confidence right now. I'm always trying to work to have um, better confidence. But especially when I was little, I would get really, really scared to sing in front of people. That was like something that really freaked me out. Um, I've always been singing with my dad. He's a guitar player. And I remember when I was really little and I just hated singing in front of people. I couldn't look at people in the eye and connect with them. He would, um, he would do Facebook lives back like before, I don't know, people did like Instagram lives. We would do Facebook lives and, um, and all of his friends would join and they had all 
they're like, oh, good job, Ava. And I didn't know like all of his high school friends. So I'm like, wow, all these random people are telling me good job. But it's really <laughs> just like family and friends. I think that that um, helps my confidence, especially with singing. Um, yeah. Just I did that for like a year before I ever did like music in front of people. And okay. I never really did like school plays and stuff like that. Oh, so. really? Wow. Yeah, talent shows were like my worst fear, stuff like that. But <laughs> right. um, I think I'm finally starting to embrace that. Wow, that's re- really cool. So, I mean, we're going to get into your singing here in a minute, but what what other things were you involved with growing up? Like, what do you do any kind of sports or do you, you know, do anything else besides that? Um, you know, I left the sports to my brothers. Okay. <laughs> I was never really great at sports. My coordination skills aren't amazing um but I was in a gospel choir when I was eight and that's really where I learned to love gospel music and Christian music and um and I was in a gospel choir from eight to twelve. Oh wow and so that's kind of when I decided that like music was my thing and that's like what I really wanted to do so yeah well so let's talk about that for a minute I know um and I, I I gotta let our listeners know that uh before we get started, I always kind of like ask my guest, Ava, like any questions. And she just looks me right in the eye and says, can we say a prayer before we start? And she's the first person that I've interviewed <clears throat> that asked to do that. And I have to say, boy, I felt such a, such a surge of energy when you did that. And to, for what it's worth, Ava, I actually needed that um, today. And and so sorry to get so really sentimental and emotional here, but man, it was so powerful to hear you do that and be confident to even ask me that. Like, I think there's probably times where I've wanted to maybe say that maybe we should say a prayer, but like, no, they might be like, think I'm weird or whatever. You didn't hesitate. So obviously faith and faith in God and you're, you know, and that means a lot to you. So can you kind of describe all of that and, and why that means so much to you? Well, first of all, thank you for saying that. That means so much. Yeah. Um, I, I think that my family has always just really celebrated faith and, um, and my parents especially have done a great job of letting us like ask questions and, um, and not like know things like sometimes I just don't know. And, and they really are really good about, um, letting me ask the hard questions and letting me pray about it. And, um, sometimes I don't get answers and I just think that, um, yeah, yeah. I just, I feel like faith has just always been a really big part of my life. I grew up always listening to like Sam cook on Sundays. And so like, <laughs> when I think of like, um, faith, I think of like a warmness, like a home, homey feel like every Sunday we have a big Sunday dinner and we listen to our favorite gospel, gospel music and, and, um, like having faith and, in my relationship with, with my heavenly father, I just feel so warm and like comforting. And also I'm 15. So I don't like know everything. And, um, I haven't even like finished the Bible, but I, (laughs) uh, I just love how I feel when I'm at church and when I'm praying and yeah. Well, you know, you may not have, you may only be 15, but I think, you know, when we're kids, we had it figured out. I think when we get, we become adults, we forget these things that we already knew. And I think that's why you're so powerful in your faith, because Mm -hmm. there's, you're, you're not overthinking everything. You're not trying to impress this person, that person. You're just like, you're doing it out of the pure love of how this makes you feel and what it does for you and for other people. Is that fair to say? Oh, that that's so kind. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I do believe that you, you know, I, you know, kids like think about, you know, yeah, you're 15, but even when you were younger, like you had faith as big as the universe, you loved yourself, you loved everybody, right? It was just, you have this, and I, and I can still feel that in you. And I think sometimes as adults speaking for myself, we tend to forget that sometimes. And, you know, and that, I think that's why that prayer at the beginning hit me so hard is just that faith that you had the guts to even ask me, but you didn't hesitate. I'm like, that's how we are when we're kids. We don't care. We're like, no, let's have a prayer, Todd. Let's do this. I just thought, wow, who's this girl, right? Um, It definitely eases up my nerves a bit. I think I got in the habit of doing it before like performances and, um, and just stuff like that. So it, it helps me. It's just another asset. 
Yeah. So let's talk about your, your first song was uh, this ain't the same old prayer, right? So much writing. So much writing. Um, yeah, that, that's my first song. I, I released that when I was 13. I wrote it when I was 12 with my dad. We co-wrote, we co-write our songs. Oh, do you? Um, okay. And your dad's name's Mark, right? Yes. My dad's yeah. name's Mark. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually an artist, um, but he does Christian artwork. So that's really cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so I remember one night I came to my parents and this was actually about a week before I moved to Nashville. And I just remember being so like scared and just worried that I wasn't going to make friends. And, um, and that like, I was moving to Nashville because, well, we've actually moved a couple of times, my family, but this was just like our biggest move yet, our biggest yeah. move yet. And, um, and I just remember being so nervous that like, Oh, I just posted on Instagram that I'm moving to Nashville because I want to pursue music. Like, what if I don't make it? What if I don't like, yeah. what if things just flop for me? And I was just like really worried about kind of the embarrassment of that. Um, and, and I remember writing in my journal, um, I sometimes I'll write down my prayers and I, and I wrote it down and I just was like, heavenly father, I'm so scared to leave my, my house. I'm so scared to leave my room and my friends. And we have this big U-Haul in our driveway and, um, and it, those are like direct lyrics in my song from my journal. And I just remember being like, mom, dad, I'm so scared. And then the next morning I came upstairs and my dad had written this song and, um, and well, we co-wrote it. I worked on the melody with him and a couple lyrics, but he had just like built this like outline of this awesome yeah. song and it perfectly captured how I felt. And so we recorded it three days before I moved. Wow. And, um, and I just remember being like so emotional cause it was like my first song and I was, it was exactly how I was feeling. And we released it about a week after living in Nashville. Wow. wow. That's amazing to be able to do that at that age. And it's great to obviously have your dad there helping you along the way and to have mm -hmm. that support. And, uh, yeah, I could not have done it without him. Yeah. And that's got to feel good knowing that your parents, like they believe in you and they're supporting your dream and they want, they want to see you you know, pursue this and go for it. Right. How does that feel knowing yeah. that they've got your back like that? Um, I think it, it just feels like so comforting and it's just like such a safe place. Like if I ever like just fall, which I will, and I'll, and I'll always mess up because I'm human. Um, it's just nice that they're always going to be in my corner rooting for me when or lose. Yeah. So how many, how many songs now have you, you know, co-wrote with your dad and, and produced at this point? Oh gosh. Um, I think <laughs> I have like, let me count. I have beautiful lullaby, the same, the same old prayer. I think I have seven out right now wow. that we've written together. And, and a lot of those, all of those came out like our first year in Nashville. Um, okay. And it was very like how we were feeling at the time and we would do these things called hook walks and we just go on a walk and we talk about everything that was going on in my life at the time mm -hmm. and um and what I was feeling like eating alone that's like how I had like no friends at first it, that's not really the meaning of the song but I think that that's kind of what it rooted from yeah uh, so we just go walk and we talk about these things and then we'd write our songs together so yeah I have seven out right now and a couple more coming out soon. Very cool. Well, I, like I said, I, you know, I listened to beautiful this morning, your song, beautiful, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, what, what inspired that song? Because that one really, really is touching and very, it's very, uh, I know you feel a lot of love and compassion in that song when I was listening to you sing that. Oh, thank you. That's such a compliment. Um, yeah. that song, I, it's actually kind of another journal entry, actually. I, I remember going to the seventh grade dance and no one asked me to dance except my brother because no one asked me to dance. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And I feel like it was like, that is not like a huge story buildup, but I went to a couple where I didn't get asked to dance and it was like really like shattering for me because I was like still pretty little. And um, <laughs> yeah, like seventh grade me on my heartbroken when no one asked me to dance. But also like looking back at pictures, I'm like, I'm not so shocked. But like at, then I was, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of what that song is about. And the funny thing about that song is I didn't listen to it until the day it came out because really? I was like, I mean, I'd listened to it like 
a couple months before, but, um, but not fully like finished. I hadn't finished listening to it. I was super embarrassed of it just because it's my most honest song. Mm. And I think, um, like my reaction, a lot of people's reaction to it, like helped me feel better about it. Cause a lot yeah. of people can relate to it. Not like the seventh grade thing, but like it's, it's relevant in a lot of people's lives, like at whatever stage, um, just like wanting to feel beautiful and wanting to feel loved. And, um, and I just remember being so nervous to release it and not wanting to post about it. And just being like, I'm so embarrassed that like all my friends are going to see this and know <laughs> that I had this experience. Um, but people really were super kind about it. So yeah, that's the story behind beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. A, a very vulnerable thing to do. And, that, and I think that's where you felt nervous. It's like, Hey, this is pretty vulnerable for me to put this out there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> totally. And, but, but I really love, like, I think that's where people connect the most with you is because you are vulnerable. Like you, you, your lyrics are, like you said, they're coming from journal entries and journal entries are when you're being vulnerable. You're truly mm -hmm. writing down your true feelings. It's usually we don't share those with people, but you're, you're putting them into songs and videos and, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I get why you're a little nervous at times, but man, I really do admire your vulnerability around these songs. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, um, what does a day look like for you, Ava? Like, you know, I know you, you're singing and song and you're doing songwriting and all that stuff, but what, what does it look like for you in a day? What are you doing? Um, well, <laughs> so I do homeschool. I do Berkeley college of music and, and I'll usually wake up and, um, I'm like, should I go through every step? I have a big yeah. glass of water to start off my day. Sure. Uh, just a little bit of like, vocal health I guess I gotta stay up on my water okay and, um, usually so Monday Wednesday and Friday me and my brother go to early morning bible study and um it starts at 6 15 in the morning and it's really early <laughs> but um but it's awesome so yeah. we wake up and we'll do that and we'll get home around 7 30 and um and then I'll start my school for the day and usually I'll I'll work out and just because these are things that really help my my voice and yeah. just like overall health they make me feel good so I'll work out and then I'll I'll sing with my dad I try and sing with my dad every day because it really feels like therapy yeah um, it's super nice just to like sing songs without any like pressure yeah and um and I'll maybe help my mom cook and I'll just talk to her I think days are pretty like when I'm homeschooled, they're pretty fluid. Like I can kind of change it up a bit. Yeah. Some days I have voice lessons and some days I have rehearsals with, with uh, my guitarist. Like today I had a rehearsal for a big show we have coming up. So oh, I cool. think uh, my days are always kind of centered around like music and how I can dial in my art a little bit better that day. Gotcha. Thanks for sharing that. Do you ever feel at times overwhelmed because I mean, you're taking on a, I mean, this is a big thing you're doing. Do you ever feel like, wow, this is, this is so big. And, and, or do you, or do you feel like, no, this is no big deal. This is just me being me. I think I feel overwhelmed every day especially <laughs> when I like procrastinate and I'm like, Ooh, I have 10 assignments in one class. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, Oh, those were due last week. You oh, know, no. I, I yeah. think I tend to get a little overwhelmed, but sometimes I think I put a lot of that on myself. Like, I'm like, okay, I could have done that yesterday or the day before, but I pushed it to today and now I have a million things. But um, yeah, I think I definitely get overwhelmed sometimes with, with Instagram too. I'm like, Ooh, I have to post today and that can be, overwhelming. Yeah. but yeah, but I actually love being on there and people are so sweet to me. And I feel like I have like true friends that I've met through there. So right on. Um, I think if I don't let myself get too overwhelmed, then, then it's a good day. But. Everything's fine. Sure. Well, speaking of friends, um, do you, do you, ha are you a pretty social person? Do you have a lot of friends or how does that, how do you balance all this with friends? I, I would say I'm definitely an extrovert okay. um, <laughs> and I have a handful of really good friends. I wouldn't say I have a lot of friends. Um, I've lived in four States, so I have like a lot of friends kind of spread out, but, um, mm -hmm. but like in my state right now, I have like a really solid group that I love that, um, that I hang out with all the time, but I'm more in favor of like a good handful of like awesome friends that know me super well than a yeah. couple that I don't really know too well, but 
Gotcha. When I first moved here, I definitely didn't have friends for like a year. And that was really hard. Um, we also moved right during Corona. So oh, yeah. it was really hard to like make friends. Um, but it's been like the past couple months that have been awesome and that I've gotten to meet people. You know, thank you for sharing that. You know, I work with a lot of kids, you know, I coach a lot of kids and counsel a lot of kids who during Corona, it was a very difficult time for them. Um, Cause again, we're on lockdown. You know, a lot of us were on lockdown where we couldn't, you know, hang out that kind of thing. And it really affected their mental health. And how did you, how did you survive all of that? And how did you kind of maybe keep your mental health in check during that difficult time because then you throw in the move on top of it I mean that's that's a lot going on yeah it, it was a lot I I genuinely think it was music and my brothers um okay. I'm really close with my with my brothers um my brother Bo would always take me to hang out with his friends and he's older than me he's 17 okay so well he's 18 now but um yeah I think that he definitely really, really helped me. He was super kind. He made friends a little bit easier than I did. And it was like, so cool of him. I don't think I realized at the time, but now looking back, I'm like, that was so cool of him to like bring his little sister to hang out with his guy friends. Like that was such an awesome big brother move. And I also think that like writing songs with my dad and, um, yeah. And I go on bike rides and I just like listen to music or I go on a run and I listen to music. And I just think it really like music was my friend. Yeah. And that was really helpful. Well, I love that. And what I'm hearing you say is you, you, your brothers and your dad and you know, your family specifically, you guys mm-hmm. were doing things to help connect each other with each other. Like you were doing things to, yeah. you know, you weren't just locked up in a bedroom doing nothing. You guys were connecting, getting out, doing things. And I, and I can imagine how that was very helpful to make you, you know, help you get through all that. Yeah, we all got so close over our move. Like, um, I would cook with my mom all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and I just like love talking to my mom. She's awesome. She's my best friend. But I just feel like we all in um, when we, where we lived before, we we were all we've always been super close. But uh, I feel like there's a different type of closeness that comes when like, all you have is each other. Yeah. Um, and I think that that was like a really hard thing, but a really good thing. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. How did your faith help you through that time? You know, how did, how did your, you know, your, your testimony of, you know, heavenly father looking over you and all of that during that time, how did that help you? Um, I think that there were times when like, I definitely thought that my prayers were going unanswered and Mm -hmm. I'd be like, just crying and be like, I don't know why I'm living in Tennessee. Like, it was like, it was like <laughs> right. what am I doing here? Um, but I think that like all the things that I prayed for then, like, Oh, I, I want friends and I, and I want um, my song to do good. And, yeah, and I want like everyone in my family to just be happy. Cause we were all just like, it was a really sad time. It was, it was hard. And my brother had left on a church mission trip just 10 days earlier. And so, um, it was just like a lot at one time. And, um, and I just think like at the time my prayers sometimes were going unanswered, but like looking back now, I'm like, Oh my gosh, they were answered in like the most wonderful ways. Like, um, my friend, like I prayed for friends, but I became best friends with my older brother. And, um, and it was just like, I didn't see it then, but um, I think that, Heavenly Father just like had a different idea, but I had a different idea of what I thought the answered prayers were going to look like. Um, Yeah, they were just like, yeah, I just think he helped me so much learn like a different perspective. Wow. Very cool. And I think a lot of people can relate with what you're saying. It's like, I don't feel like my prayers are being answered. And what's funny, I, I think, I think, I think God has to look down and laugh at us sometimes and like, okay, you asked for a best friend. I gave it to you. It's right there in your, in your very own house. What's going on? You know, (laughs) right there sharing a bathroom. Yeah. I'm like, uh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, you know, and and it's always easy to look back, but it's really cool that you can look back and go, man, the the prayers were answered line things up. You were connecting with your family in a really strong way. And I think, I think that's why people love your music because 
I think what you're doing there is you're helping people connect, um, not only connect with you, obviously, as the, as the singer, but your lyrics. I mean, as I listened to Beautiful, it was really making my mind think about my own life. Like I was like, you know, yeah, I felt that way before. And I, and here I am, I'm 53 years old, you know, and I'm hearing these lyrics and I'm going, wow, it's, it was causing me to reflect on my life a little bit. And, uh, and I think that's what, what your lyrics and your songs are doing is it's helping people think and connect and maybe, maybe even reminisce on the times when I had not only tough times, but how I was able to make it through it with, uh, with the help of God and, and, and people like you who sing such beautiful songs. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me. That yeah. means so much, especially coming from you. Like when people love my songs that, and like relate to them, that that's the highest compliment. Yeah, absolutely. So let me, I'm going to ask you a really tough question. Maybe, maybe it's not tough, but a lot of people go, man, that's a tough question, but here it is. You ready? The I'm question ready. Is, what do you love most about you? Oh, I love that question. Um, like, uh, like personality or just anything, just anything. Yeah. What do you, what, if you could name, pick one thing, cause there's probably a lot, but uh, what, do you, what do you love most? <laughs> I love, I love that. I found my thing. Hmm. I love that. Like, um, that I got over my fear of singing in front of people. And I do still get really nervous, but I, I love that I like tried and realized how much I loved it, even though it's super scary sometimes. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I love that. Um, that I feel like singing was just like placed in my lap. Like it was just like, um, just a friend. I, I love that. I found that part of myself that I like, I, I mean, I, I know I like have a memory of like when I realized how much I loved to sing and, yeah. and I, I was six and I like, knew that I wanted to be a singer. And I'm just really glad that I had that experience. And I'm really glad that I found how much I love that because it, it's been like something so consistent throughout my whole life. Just like being able to yeah, not only like sing notes and like, um, like style wise, but just like feel all these different emotions when I can sing a song and, um, and just like, really, it's like therapy. And I, I love that I found I, that I found that. Boy, that's beautifully said. Thank you for sharing that. You know, having purpose in life is everything. I think, you know, yeah. um, there's a quote by Nitschke that says, "He who has his why can deal with almost any how," and and really, you found your why, you found your purpose, you found your friend, you, found, you know, and to be able to, or, or that thing as you called it. <laughs> I feel like everyone's gonna think I don't have any friends. I swear, I, I have some awesome friends. <laughs> right. And, I, and they're not just music and brothers. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're people that I don't share blood with. And, um, yeah. and I love them. <laughs> so, you know, girls your age at age 15, you know, that's a tough age for, for, for girls and for guys. But we're yeah. going to talk about girls for a second. It's tough it's a tough time in life. It's, you know, you're trying to find yourself, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to be confident, you're trying to hopefully be accepted by friends and feel, you know, validated and that kind of thing. If there, if, what would you say to girls that are listening to you right now that are your age that are struggling? Like, what could you tell them that may help them maybe get through or give them some advice to help them through this tough time they may be going through? Hmm. I love that. Um, I mean, for me, I think that um, like building confidence wise comes from like really picking people who I uh, really am inspired by mm -hmm. and, um, and like adapting my favorite parts about them into my own life. Ooh, and um, I love that. I think that like my mom inspires me so much. And I, I love that. Like, um, I think that to, when I was feeling unconfident and confident, how do you spell unconfident? When I was um, not feeling confident. Yeah, there we go. That was good. <laughs> not feeling confident. Um, I just like loved and admired her confidence. And I just would try to like, 
um, put that upon myself, like on myself. So I, I also picked like musicians that I love and, um, and just random people. Like I'm a huge fan of Jackie O and I just like, yeah. <laughs> I like, yeah, like she's not even a musician, but I like, I learned all these things about her and I, and I kind of like put it in my own life and I just tried to like, um, I just tried to like be her in, yeah. in ways that I loved. So yeah. I don't know. I feel like just pick inspirations of people that you admire and, um, and try to visualize it in your own life. Well, that's beautifully said and great advice. Anyone listening to this, uh, whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. That's great advice. Thank you know, you. yeah. Pick someone you admire. What do you admire about them? And then try to, you know, incorporate that. You know, I used to, in, in my church, I used to teach the, the, the young men and I'd always say, quit quoting Jesus and be Jesus today. Mm, I love um, and, you know, it's kind of like what you're saying is like, take the attributes and the characteristics of someone you admire and just go be those things the best that you can and, and utilize those in your life. And I, 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 I think that's what I hear you saying. <laughs> that's what I was trying to get out. Sometimes the words come a little slow. Oh, no. No, you said it beautiful. It was great. I loved what you said. Um, so what are your plans uh, now that you're 15 <laughs> and you're there in Nashville, you're, you're, you're working on your dream. What are, what are, what do you, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, I want to graduate from Berkeley college of music. I want to, I want to get a songwriting degree. That's like one of my big goals. Okay. I'm not an amazing songwriter. I, um, I like, I've never written a song all by myself. I've always done co-writes. And so okay. I think my biggest goal is to like write a song all by myself that, um, that I can just pick, Oh, I wrote this. So like, I, yeah. I hope that in five years, I just have a notebook full of songs that I wrote all by myself. And as much as I love the songs that I've co-written with people and I've co-written with my dad, because yeah. I did definitely put a lot of me in there. It'd be really cool to, to have a couple of just ones that I just made by myself. Yeah. Well, I have no doubt you will do that. Um, I'm hoping I'm taking a songwriting class right now. So yeah, probably have to write one next week, but um, you know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I think I really believe you'll do that. And I have no doubt about it. Um, you know, as I sit here, listening to you talking, and I think of your parents, um, I mean, you're, it takes a lot of sacrifice for what you're doing. Like, even in your own personal life, for you to be really good at what you do, you have to sacrifice a bunch of things. You really do. Like there's probably times where maybe friends are hanging out and you're sacrificing that time to practice, or you have to sacrifice doing school online so you can practice more music and you're doing all these sacrifices. But then I think about your parents too, of what, you know, how much they sacrifice because they care and believe and love you. Yeah. I mean, how does that feel just knowing that they're sacrificing these things and they're allowing you to just go for this, you know? It feels like so good, but I feel like it also feels a little pressurizing. Like I'm like, Oh, I don't want to <laughs> let them down. You know? Yeah. I'm like, Oh, they're, they're doing so much for me. I definitely, it's, it's actually really motivating. Yeah. I think like that, like they pay for my, for my coaching and, yeah. and, um, and they pay for my guitar. They paid for, well, I went half and half. There you go. For my <laughs> uh, yeah. But they, they made up the difference and like, I don't know. I just feel like they do so much for me and for my brothers and, um, and it's really inspiring and super motivating. And, and I love that it's pressurizing because it, it really makes me want to be my best and, yeah. and always put my best foot forward. And sometimes I don't. And sometimes I like choose to go hang out with my friends instead of practice. And I, to pay the consequences for those ones but yeah. um i just think it's it's really like shows like what kind of mom i want to be yeah. watching my mom sacrifice things for me and um and and my dad too yeah well shout out to your parents um i admire shout what they're doing yes awesome. shout out to them and they're, they're obviously great people who are raising amazing kids who mm -hmm. are allowing them to live their dreams. And I, I just think that's so cool when I see parents doing this. And so 
Um, yeah. uh, hopefully they'll listen to this, but, uh, I'm sure they will, but, uh, shout out to them. <laughs> they <laughs> <There's> better, <laughs> they better do nah, that. They don't really, you know, <laughs> they will, they will. Yeah. But I have no doubt that you're going to be, this is just only this, the beginning of what you're going to do and the influence you're going to have on people and the light you're going to shine into this world. Yeah. It's already shining bright and it's only going to get brighter and brighter. And, and, uh, I just love your perspective on things. It's pretty, that's what I meant by you're way more mature than a 15 year old with the way you think and the way you carry yourself. And it's, it's really inspiring to watch that. Thank you so much. No, you bet. Well, um, if people wanted to reach out to you and they want to just, you know, learn more about your music and they want, maybe, maybe they even have a question to ask you, what, what would be the best way if you're okay with that? Like what's the best way for them to find your stuff? Um, I'm super, active on Instagram, except this week, which is why I was terrible at messaging you back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no, um, you were, you were fine. <laughs> my brother got married. So I was kind of like off my phone and <laughs> just with my family. But um, yeah. but I love talking to, I call them friends, my friends yeah. on Instagram. Sure, um, sure. It's like my favorite thing to do. So my Instagram is Ava lives music, L I B S. That's my name. And, um, and I always try to message you back and yeah. And yeah, and I love like posting. So if you guys have song requests, just DM me and I, I'll try and do them. So yeah, yeah Instagram and, and, and TikTok and stuff like that. And you have a YouTube channel with all your music on there, which is fantastic. Yeah. And I know you're on every musical platform out there. I'm Spotify, on all of them. You're on all of them. And even like Pandora or wherever that's like, yeah, they have like Apple music and Spotify, but I'm just, I put them on them all so everyone can have them. No, I love that. And I challenge everyone listening to this to go check out her music and download her music and support her. Uh, you. You, you, you won't regret it. And again, you'll want to do that because you'll listen to her song. Go listen to Beautiful and, and try not to cry. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It was amazing. And uh, but I challenge all of you to go out and, and follow her and, you know, just it, and it'll be fun to watch just where this goes. And you know, in a few years, I'll have you back on the show and we'll talk about everything that's happened. And I would love in to have five that. Years, we'll see if I have a notebook full of my own songs. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we'll see. We'll definitely see that. But, uh, you know, in closing, if, you know, if you could share one last bit of advice for anyone listening to your voice right now, one last thing that you could share that would bring some light into their life that they may be struggling, what would you say? Um... I would say, okay, this is like pretty recent for me, but um, one of the, the leaders in my church, he, he, we were doing like a youth night and he said that, um, that he starts every morning with an open prayer. And that's just like where he doesn't end the prayer. So he has it going all day. Mm. And he's just like, he just, um, he feels like it's like this constant communication with, with heavenly father. And I've started to do that. And I started that at a time when I was a little bit more down on things and it's really helped me so i would say that if you're struggling right now have an open prayer wow great advice i love that i've never heard of that before that's pretty cool i hadn't heard of it either but he just yeah. starts every morning and he doesn't end it and then it helps him like react to things better he says and yeah it helps me when i want to fight with my brothers i'm like oh, <laughs> get fine in front of him yeah no but yeah. I, um, it definitely is helpful Wow. I love it. Great advice. Well, Ava, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show today. I it's love been so awesome to be on. It's yeah. just so cool. You got obviously an amazing family. Please tell them thank you for allowing me to interview you today. Cause sure. uh, again, I, it means a lot to me. Um, thanks, for, I, thanks for reaching out to me. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that. Someone brought, brought you to my attention saying, you got to get this girl on. And I'm, I'm so glad that you <laughs> I, said I yes. Too. This was an <laughs> awesome experience. This is such a cool podcast. Thank you so much. And we're going to get this out to a lot of people. You know, the, the reach is about 350,000 and uh, we're going to keep pumping this. And I can't wait for people to hear you. Um, I'm going to put all uh, for you listening to this. I'll put all of her uh, links in the show notes. So you'll be able to link to her YouTube page, uh, to Spotify, uh, to her um, Instagram page and all that fun stuff. So you can, you guys can get to know her. Yeah, oh, Absolutely. And, uh, but I'm looking forward to, to getting this out to as many people as we can. And, and Ava, thanks for being such a, a beautiful soul and uh, a light in this world. Thank you. I, 
I really appreciate you saying that. You bet. Well, hey guys, I told you this was going to be a special treat today. Uh, Ava Mabry, thank you. Um, and please reach out to her guys, support her. And uh, let's watch this star just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Love you guys. You guys are the best. Yeah. Thanks to my sponsors. Thanks for all you do. Um, don't leave yet because I got something else to ask you, um, Ava. Um, but uh, love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And please share this with everyone you know. Love it. Take care.